was making this uh, um, video because I in the last video I said I'd make a video on on um, from the program automatically uh, probing with the Renishaw spindle probe to get your fixture offset values and how you can use them in, in the variable in the machines variables to and and uh, user variables to do calculations and then update or, or recall information from the machine, if you will, into your program, do a calculation and then output information back to the control to uh, adjust things like, like the fixture offsets in this case. But this can go way further than that and it can be very complicated and I'm trying to keep this simple and quick. So I'm making this kind of a quick little video. There is much more going on here than I can show in one little video like this as far as what you can do with this. Like you could probe you could uh, mill a bore, probe the bore with the probe, and then adjust your um, radius or diameter of your cutter and rerun the tool. And you could keep doing that until it satisfies a, a condition that says, okay, the bore is the size I want it. And, and I have used done this before. I've even used it to offset the length of tools to match them together because when you index inserts on face mills and things like that, they don't exactly repeat perfectly. There might be a thousandth or two off the way the inserts set in the pockets and you can uh, um, maybe make a cut stand off of the where you want a little bit and then come in and probe it or you can cut with a face mill and then cut with your finishing end mills if you're doing that kind of thing and then probe the difference in heights and adjust the offsets and rerun the tools and um, and the probe will keep doing that in a continuous loop until it things match or get to the sizes you want you can do all those things you can make custom G codes like the drilling cycles and and um, various custom cycles. Um, you've seen them on controls all the time. You know, you when you're peck drilling or you're boring or you're doing a. I think Haas uses this G13 to to, to mill out pockets, circular pockets and stuff like that. You know, um, or thread milling. You could do all this stuff automatically if you went to the trouble to make the custom cycle to do it. And these these functions from the machine and the um, control and back and forth to your programs can do all these things if you get to and, and it's very complicated and I didn't want to get too you know um, uh, you know I don't know how to put it I didn't I didn't want to get this program this I mean this video to go into so much detail that it becomes very boring so I'm just going to show what I was doing with this particular setup and and uh and try to and i'm going to quickly go through the code and so if you want to study that more carefully you, you might want to pause the video and look at it and everything because i'm not going to go into a lot of detail i mean people that run this kind of equipment and i think other people understand how to do mathematical calculations and things and you can do all that in the g code itself uh, uh, and um input and output stuff to the program back and forth from the control and back to the control to accomplish the things you want to do and also you could also um rotate program you know in the program rotate things to cut and and it'll it'll build the program if you will uh, that would be more like a, a parametric programming where it actually builds a program to the size and shape based on some variables like like you do it all the time in drilling and tapping and and boring cycles when you enter in the r value and the and the z and the d and all this kind of stuff that's a a custom g code um that uses parametric programming and, and you enter the values of your parameters if you will and then it makes the program do what it's supposed to do so all these things are possible to do and if you were really interested in this subject i'd recommend getting a book on it because i'm not a super expert on it either i do what i do because i've learned over the years to do it but this can go all the way to very complex things so let me show you what i'm doing here and then if you have more questions or you want to have more information i mean i'll try to answer them but like i said i'm not a real supreme expert on this i i've studied it a little bit and used it um I bought a book the other day, but I, and I was trying to find it for this video to show you on parametric programming, but I can't seem to find it where I put it. But I'll show you what I'm doing with this particular setup, and then uh, we can go from there. If you want, if you want to do more videos on this kind of stuff, this is going to be a video for everybody. Uh, this is going to be more technical video. There's going to be no machining in this video. It's just going to be 
in the you know showing the the um, probing operation so if this isn't the kind of video for you then maybe you want to skip it but some people want it, this information and if i can help somehow then that's what this video is all about so let's watch the video do a little short description of what we're actually trying to do here if if you imagine this is the pallet in the machine okay it's going to draw it square here and and um i'm going to kind of draw this in relation to the way you stand in front of the machine if you're standing like right here the spindle is going to be right here and the, and the y-axis going up and down like this and this is the x-axis and the z of course going in and the rotation this way of the b so from zero return of the machine where it's all the way back in z there's 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 a circle here a diameter if you will that's um a radius of 43.334 like like you may have seen in my previous video when i was describing setting the the offsets manually with the probe so this this would be the center of rotation here somewhere of the pallet and, and we have this part sitting on the pallet in this case for this operation kind of like this and we want to um there's a, a offset right in the middle that's g54 and then there's an offset that's that's actually right here on the end of the part g55 and the other side here of g56 and we have to um probe this and kind of get this thing centered on here or, or in the control the offsets centered in relation to the stock where it's setting on the pallet if you will and so this is what this is going to be about this uh, video it's going to be about showing how how you can do this all um pretty much automatically pallet really has corners like that on it all this pretty much automatically with calculations in the g-code itself and you don't have to to manually calculate like I did in the previous video with a calculator of this distance down to my uh, part because I had the part sitting well I had the part sitting in the center you know and, and I wanted to face the um, the two long faces and get the part 14 inches tall in this case we want to face the two ends there's about there's roughly about an inch and a half of stock total so three quarters of an inch on each end we want to face it down to where the part is actually 28 inches long here and so that's what the calculations in the in the code of the program are going to do so i know this kind of sounds kind of funny right now but when you see it in the in the program it's going to make more sense as far as the calculations if you want to go over those this like I said, this video is not going to be for everybody. I said in the last video I'd make a video showing how this happens. And um, on the on the first video showing this aluminum block, I just manually uh, ran the indicator over the end of the part here. And that was because these, these um, forgings can vary so much. And so if there's, is, you know, not flat on the end, and if you're just probing with the spindle probe in two places to get this rotational angle, it you might be in a low spot or a high spot or something or you know there's an angle on the front of the part or something's not square and so i run this um the the indicator over it when i do these first operations just because i want to kind of evaluate the face of the material and get my b rotation where i want it it it, it you could actually probe it i guess but but it, i feel like it's a little safer to do that i don't want to face off too much stock on one side and not have the other side not clean up or something like that so let's let's look at the code and then um, I'm gonna actually run the cycle on the machine so you can see it doing it and updating the offset numbers in the control and like I said everything is accessible in the in the control let, well actually let me show you in the manual for this machine although although every machine this is this machine is a is a meldus control on it it's the mitsubishi meldus control but all controls pretty much do this same thing 
it's just maybe in slightly different uh, variables. Now there's there's a uh, there's user variables that you you can set and use for your values in calculations if you need to do that, and then there's these what I would I guess call machine variables, which are like um, these are settings in the machine and you can access them. And right now you're looking at the the manual of this control in the page where it shows these uh, values. So you're going to see this in the program that I'm going to show you, like these pound. 5221 is axis number one, which is the X axis on this machine. And you can access or update. You can do either. You can access this number and use it in a calculation, or you can actually set that from your program on the X axis, Y, Z. And it, this machine only has four axes, so this is the B axis, the fourth axis. And this goes all the way to six axes here if you wanted. So we're going to be using really these three offsets to do um, what we're doing here so these are the um, machine variables if you will that you can access update or access the information from your machine to do whatever you want now now if you're using extended offsets these would be the extended offset variables and then you, you can even access uh, if I go through this you can even access other variables in your machine's control you know like all of these for instance to do various calculations and you can you can even um do a uh, um very complex um mathematical formulas if you want to and it, it kind of explains it you know you can even do you know all of these mathematical formulas and everything if you want to get to that extent which i guess would be it'd be more accurately called possibly parametric programming when you get to that point because you can actually make yourself custom g-code cycles and everything with this if you go to that extent I'm just showing you a very simple part of this just to so show you how you can use this with the Renishaw probe to update fixture offsets but this can go way more than this and, and I'm not any real super expert on a lot of this stuff I just mostly use this um, I have made very simple macro programs in the past to do various things but believe me there if, if you want to know more about this you should get a book on the subject and study it so that's the the machines manual and and if you're going to do a, a lot with a Renishaw probe you should get this manual I'm, I'm not sure where to get the, these now but I've had this forever and this shows everything about the probing cycles that the machine the Renishaw cycles can do and and these are the the variables that it outputs information to and it's mostly this pound 138 when you're probing things that it outputs the the result and you can take but you can use all of these the the positions i don't know if you can see this the positions of the machine and everything that it probed and you can do all this i'm using their macros more or less like you can see it here this 9811 9812 9814 and so on to do um, my uh, measurements and I'm, I'm not really uh, accessing the, these variables per se in this uh, program I'm showing you but you could do that and uh, use all this information and calculate various things in the program with calculations using um, you know various uh, calculating functions like programming you know like if ands or or statements and things like that so this can this can really get complex if you wanted to get the code here of this so here's the top of the program and this is just the the beginning and the tool change to the spindle probe this machine if this is kind of confusing you call the tool up into the arm first and then you change to that tool calling the next tool that's the reason that code kind of looks unusual compared to some programs that's just the way the tool changer on this machine works so all of this up to here is just uh, preparing the tool and getting it down there and rotating the um, the part with this uh, these commands here with the B axis commands and then we come down to four inches in Z and rapid move and then we're going to probe this G65 P9817 is the Renishaw cycle for probing uh, a rotary axis um, zero point or angle if you will 
and it takes two hits 24 inches apart from X0 and then uh, it, it, it pushes down till it hits the part Z0 and these the Q is, is a one inch over travel it, just in case it needs it if the parts not exactly where it's supposed to be and s1 is fixture offset one or like the note says g54 here and then we're going to wrap it back to 10 inches clearance and then it's going to set the axis rotation the b0 on on 55 and 56 to equal what it just probed for 54 you'll see that when i actually run the program happening then it's gonna it's gonna rotate the the B axis and back to zero to make sure it's at the new zero point and clamp it. That M10 is clamping the B axis. It's gonna come down to four inches above the part again, and it's gonna probe down straight down to uh, P9811 is a single point probing cycle on the Renishaw cycles, just to take one point. And it, in this case, it's gonna probe for Z zero and set that on fixture offset one g54 like my note here says and uh q one inch is an over travel distance in case the part isn't exactly where it is again and then it's going to calculate with these calculations see so you can put calculations like this in a in the program but the program has to have these square brackets i don't know there might be a name for them i just call them square brackets like these instead of your normal parentheses because you can see here the notes in a G code program are in the parentheses so that it doesn't read them. So anything in, in parentheses in a G code program, it ignores. It's just for the purpose of making notes like I've done here in the green, just so that you can kind of see. I put notes in here so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening here. So it's calculating the rough offsets for G55 and 56, the X, with these mathematical formulas. And then it's going to probe the um, X zero point, which is what it says here, for the, where the actual stock is setting. This this piece of stock is is quite a bit longer than the finished length. I, could, I think it's an inch and a quarter longer, or maybe even an inch and a half longer. It has to face all that material off on the ends. And uh, so it's calculating the center of that, and then it's calculating also the Y zero and then it's going to update both the other offsets on the y zero just to be safe so they're in the same place and then it's going to wrap it back to 10 inches and, and then it's going to um this business here is this could be done in many different ways i just did it this way it's setting the um user variable 101 to equal the, the the x zero point if you will and then it's it's also i need a minus value for that zero point so it's setting that here on pound 102 and then it's using those values to calculate the actual length of the facing cycles on the end of the part if you will based on these uh if you remember on the video i made just before this this 43 point Three three four inches is the the distance down to the center of the part or the rotation of the B axis from machine zero return or home position, and it's using these values to calculate the um, the Z offset you know the Z offsets for the two to uh, fifty five and fifty six. That's what these are fifty two forty three. You can access the um, offset information in the control by using these machine variables and 5243 is for the z offset on g55 and 5263 is the z offset on uh, g56 fixture offsets and you want to make them equal to this calculation now if the part was setting perfectly in the center of rotation the offset would be um minus 29.334 in relation to this number here if you subtract half of 28 inches from 43.334 you come up with this 
and then that would be the ideal location but of course it's not going to be in the ideal location and you got to update it based on the actual probe location with with these two um, variables that I've set here you could do this a little bit different and this isn't necessarily the only way to do these calculations but that's what it's doing here and then it's rotating it's, it's it's already at a clearance move of 10 inches and it's rotating the b-axis to the g55's um, location when it's you know straight in on the end of the part and then it's going to probe here the um, X offset again just to get it exactly right because if the part is not exactly 14 inches tall these calculations up here that were rough calculating it use the value of exactly 14 inches but the part might not be exactly 14 inches it might be a few thousandths shorter than that and so it um it actually needs to reprobe the um x here for g55 and set that on that offset and then move back away out in z to clear so that it can rotate the b-axis and probe the the g56 is x-axis okay so that that's all it the probing done and it comes back and changes to the um 53 it's the face mill here it changes to that and it's going to start facing the ends down of the part so it actually starts 600 thousandths up from the actual depth because there's there's about three quarters of an inch on each end of this stock that has to be faced off so that's the that's a very quick um, description you could you know if you want to see this in more detail you could pause the video and look at these um, like I say you can do all kinds of calculations you can do even more than this there's a lot more that you can do with this um, what you might call um, I guess more more accurate term would be maybe parametric type programming on the g-code control or, or, or macro the macros like the Renishaw macros if you look at them that actually do these probing cycles have have um, all kinds of calculations and stuff that look very similar to this if you look at the actual code of their programs so let's run it in the machine and then you can kind of see what happens all right, we're going to show it in action here. On the, let me make sure I got the program selected. Program. All right, it looks like the right program for the tool setup. Now I have, I have to set uh, um, some Y and Z and and B angle here to begin with. So, and I changed these a little bit so you'd see the numbers change, but. I have to manually this I just set at a crude angle that's around about where that should it should be and these two I probed manually but I changed them a little bit so you'll see the numbers change and I zeroed out all these offsets on uh, 55 and 56 so let's see how this goes and uh, I'll see if I can demonstrate this it's gonna set all these offsets over here automatically and it would set some of these a little bit automatically. It's going to set the, the angle, the B angle. It's going to probe it first and make sure we got all those the same on all three offsets. And then it's going to go in and do the rest of the probing like we discussed in the, in the code. So let me start the program here. It's going to change to the spindle probe. And it's it's gonna start probing the B angle first. Um, like I said, I, I have to actually give it some idea of where things are. I can't just. I mean, I, maybe I could have made it so it could go automatically all the way from zero return and find the part, but I didn't make the program that way. So here's the. As you saw in the beginning, the pallet was the way it would have come in from the pallet changer, and now it's probing the the angle. Now I didn't. I didn't do this on the rough part, you know, for these first operations to square the block because I wanted to scan the, the face because it can be quite irregular. And if you're taking a probe, probing it just with the um, spindle probe to get the angle of the B axis, it will uh, 
you know, it's just hitting in two spots and it might not be what you want, if that makes any sense. Okay, now we'll see the 180 degrees change and it'll update all three of the offsets, or the other two, I should say. Now we're gonna come in and probe the Z depth. And this kind of gives us a, a place where to go for the rest of the probing cycles. So it shall change this a little bit right here, that number. And see, it, it rough calculated the two X axes based on where it thinks they are. Now they're gonna change a little bit because nothing is perfect in the real world. But we have to have somewhere to go when it rotates this uh, V axis. So now it's measuring where the party is in the X axis, the location of the stock. And it's gonna calculate the Z's for the other, uh, other two offsets to bring the part to 28 inches long. First, it's gonna also probe the Y axis and, and it wants to get the Y, this will change a little bit. I change these about 10 thousandths of an inch just so you'll see the numbers change on the um, actual offset on the G54. Cause you have to have something here, like I said, to show it where or round about where the part is. So I think I changed this 10,000. So you see that change about 10 updates the other two. And now it's going to rotate around and it's going to probe the X offset for G55 to get it correct on the bottom of the part in this case. And so that'll change a little bit right there. And then it's gonna come away and rotate the B axis and get the G56's X to make them more precise than just the calculated. Now in the ideal world, I suppose that these would be actual numbers would be perfect, but it never seems to work out that they're perfect. There are a few thousands difference. See, it's not much. And so that's the, that's the whole probing cycle run actually on the part. So that's it for this video. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, put them in the comments and I'll see if I can uh, shed some light on them. Like I said, I'm not a super expert, but I, I'll answer anything I can if I can do it. And um, let me know if you, uh, if you want more videos like this. To me, this, these are kind of special videos that not everybody is gonna be, they're not going to get a lot of views and 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 i don't really do everything just to get a lot of views and stuff but but uh i i do want to present this information because i can show you many many videos of just machining stuff and everything and and uh and a lot of people like those kind of videos but um that really doesn't get you anywhere you know what what's the saying if you teach a man to fish he can feed himself the rest of his life and and so this is the kind of thing I'm trying to do, you know, to, to give people information that they can use to, to improve what they're trying to do. And like I said, not that I'm any super expert or anything like that, but I have done a lot of things over the past, I don't know how many years I've been machining, like almost 50 years. And, uh, and I learned these things just because I had to. And there was really nobody to teach me. I have not taken a course or anything like that on any of this stuff that I show you in any of my videos. I've, I've learned it all myself. And I try to just present these things that I've learned. And I'm not saying that they're the best way to do things. It's just my way of doing things. And I'm just trying to show you what I do, if that makes any sense. So, you know, if you got to this far in the video, you know, you got to be pretty interested in this subject and uh, thanks for watching.